This is Women in Revival podcast. Today we are starting a series called Women Give Me to Drink. For today our topic is God delights in her. Did you know that God delights in you? He loves you very much because he made you. Deborah Shinobi will now take us further on this topic. Our Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for this opportunity to share your word together as ladies. I am praying that you will minister grace to all the ladies that we hear even this session. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to look at the topic, God delights in her. God delights in the woman. I am so grateful to the Lord for creating me a woman. It's such a great privilege to be a woman. You cannot overemphasize the beauty of God in a woman. So this afternoon, I want us to look together on God delights in her. So this is part of the series, Woman Gave Me to Drink. The series is from John chapter 4. So we'll be looking at the life of the Samaritan woman to glean forth for our own lives. So God delights in her. Isaiah 62 verse 4 says, Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Ephziba, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. This is the word of the Lord to us women. He is saying to us that we shall no more be termed forsaken. I want us to look at four key words from this Isaiah 62 verse 4. The first word is forsake, the second one is desolate, the third word is delight, and the fourth word is married. God is interested in you as a woman. Creating you as a woman is not a mistake. He did that purposely for his own purpose. You know, Matthew 19 verse 4 says, He who made them in the beginning made them male and female. There is something God wants to do through and in the male and so also true and in the female. So it wasn't a mistake when God made the man and the woman. So let us look at these four words from this Isaiah 62 verse 4. God is saying you shall no more be termed forsaken. You know that word forsaken means to quit, to leave entirely, to abandon, to be deserted. When people give up on you. So God is saying you will no more be called an abandoned woman. And I know that there are many reasons why women are abandoned. Some of you, you are single parents. Some of you, you have been rejected by your husbands. Some of you, you have been rejected even by your own very children. Some of you have been rejected by family members, by parents. You have been rejected even in your local churches due to one reason or the other. And God is coming through to you saying, even in this new year, I want a relationship with you. You will not be forsaken. I want to give you a name. I want to change your circumstances. I want to change the way you are being viewed. You will no more be forsaken. You will no longer be quitted. You will no longer be abandoned by men. You will no longer be desolate anymore. That is what I see God saying. God is saying, you will no longer be rejected by your colleagues at work. You know, some of you, you are rejected not only in your own home, even at your workplace, even on your streets. It's as if there is a tag on you. And the second word is desolate. God is saying, look, I love the woman. The word desolate means to be barren, to laid waste, to be devastated. And many of you, you are living in a devastating state. And God is saying, I am delighted in the woman. I delight in her. Even though in the beginning, the enemy beguiled her, the enemy deceived her, you know, to bring down the fall of humanity through the woman. God looked at the serpent and said to the serpent in Genesis 3.15 that I will put enmity between the woman and you, the serpent, and between your seed and our seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. So even though the first woman fell, God came again to announce that, look, 
this fallen woman, this woman that you have brought down, I delight in her through the woman. Your fall will be announced. The seed of the woman will bruise your head. The woman is also the instrument that I will use to bring an altar destruction to all your activities. So God is saying that, look, I delight in you. I love you. I want a relationship with you. As you respond to me, you shall no longer be termed barren. You will no longer be called desolate. You will no longer be deprived or destitute. You will no longer be deserted. You will no longer be uninhabited. You will no longer be depressed. You will no longer be, you know, deserted even by friends or family. And the third word that I want us to consider in this Isaiah 62 verse 4 is the light. The light. The word delight means a high degree of pleasure or enjoyment, joy, to give great pleasure satisfaction or enjoyment to highly please. So God is saying, I will find pleasure in you as you find pleasure in me. And the fourth word is married. God is saying, and you will be married. I will marry you. You will be connected to me. You will be joined to me. You will be united with me. You will be combined even in me. You will be connected and joined even unto me, your maker. As we go into the story of the Samaritan woman, these are all the Lord did through this woman and for this woman. She was forsaken. She was desolate. No one took delight in her, but Christ came to show her the depth of his love for this woman. And that is the same thing that he wants to do with you, even in this year and even in the years to come. God is saying, I delight in you. I delight in you. Regardless of what your life circumstances, your life situation, your the challenges you are facing, regardless of what they may mean, regardless of what life is throwing at you, God is saying, I delight in you. I love the woman. I created her for a reason and for a purpose. Amen. <music>